on a very rainy Sunday um, here in the foothills of North Carolina as what's left of tropical storm, tropical depression now I think. Florence is finally making its way around the state and giving us some wind and some rain. Um, I did a lot of prep in case the power goes out. So far, so good, um, but uh, knock on wood, we are still have power, uh, but I have some crafts and things I can do if the power goes out, and we still have a decent amount of natural light coming in. But yesterday, one of the things I did was go ahead and prep my quilt backing and batting and get that ready because I needed an area where I needed more light and I needed my dryer to do some pre-shrinking of things. I had already put my quilt together um, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, two or three weeks ago. I finally put this quilt together, and this was <laughs> me more time to get the borders right on this thing than anything. I thought I was never going to get this uh, done. But anyway, I want to share with you a little bit about this quilt and where it is and what I've done to get the borders and make it so that I can quilt it in sections. And also, um, I have a quilt that I completed that I'll show you at the end of the video. This is one I've been working on for some time, and there'll be a link with the little eye in the circle on the video that can take you back to the, to the preceding video that shares uh, putting this, these blocks together and doing the flying geese um, that, uh, that I did for them. I had quite a bit of this, these print fabrics left. And they were all designed to go with this floral, which is uh, from Northcott's called Chloe, uh, or the collection's called Chloe. And so I, I had quite a bit of these left, so I decided I would do a border for the quilt. And I did a flying geese border. And the, those didn't take too long. Uh, um, they went really fast. They probably went a little too fast. I think I needed to be a little more careful about the sizing and stuff of them because when I went to put everything together, um, I knew it wasn't going to fit perfectly. I knew I was going to have to add a little spacing here and there, but it, it was just really time consuming getting these all worked out. Part of it was because I hadn't really, I, I had these a certain size and I had this a certain size and then I needed to figure out how much space was going to go exactly in this floral border. It couldn't go too big because I just didn't have that much fabric, but on the other hand, um, I didn't want it to be real, real narrow either. So I had to do a little bit of playing, and then I could add or subtract flying geese to make that all work out in the corners. And so in the corners and midway through each side is one of these squares, like it's very similar to the square in the middle of the other blocks except it has a print in it. So I have navies on two corners, reds on two corners, yellows and greens um, in the side pieces for this. And this yellow that goes through here the quilt is put together, but it's actually going to come apart for quilting. So if you looked closely at this yellow sashing, you would see that it hasn't been pressed. It's actually only been sewn with a really, um, a, a very large stitch. It's basically been basted in because the yellow is deaf. This is where it all comes apart. And I've taken one section apart down at the bottom that I've taken off down here. This is part of the border has come off and I'm going to go ahead and quilt that and I'll show you that in a few moments. So what I had to do when I was working out these borders is also figure out how to make them work for doing it in sections. So I needed to have a place where I could split it somewhere on one on um, four of the corners. So that's what's happening here is that I can take this apart, quilt this in a section and then I can sew uh, this all the pieces back together. So I'll have the center part I'll have a bottom and a top and then each of the sides and the sides are about 18 inches wide and then they run the full length of this thing which currently is around 109 inches something like that. It should uh, with the take up from quilting come down to probably uh, closer to 100 inches I think once the quilt is finished. So it's a pretty big quilt. It's designed to be for a queen size. Technically it could probably go for a king. It's not as wide as it is long. It's going to end up being about 90 inches wide, but I could put it on a king bed if we had one. We don't have one, uh, but if we ever do I'll finally have something that would fit the king bed. So my challenges for this were I didn't wasn't as careful as I should have been 
making my flying geese. So sometimes there was one place where I, I stretched them out and they kind of went like this. They were, I don't know what I did, but I had to go back and do a little bit of re-sewing on that. And then just doing the calculations here, I had done, sort of laid out on paper, but uh, when I really got down to putting it together and, have, and thinking about how I was going to take this apart and quilt it in sections, I had to rethink my plan just a little bit. But I'm uh, pleased with how it came out when I had the whole thing uh, spread out on uh, another table. It wasn't even wider than this bed, so it wouldn't do me any good to show you there. But I had it spread out well enough that I could see that it all fit together. The idea behind machine quilting in sections is that if it fits before it's quilted, it should fit after it's quilted, as long as you do about the, the same density of quilting. So I needed to make sure it fit before it was quilted. And so that's why I put it all together, but I'll be taking it apart on those seams. And the batting that I'm using, um, other things I've done is I've experimented with batting. I've always used acrylic batting, but I said I wanted to try cotton. This is an 80-20 cotton batting. Um, it's called Heirloom and uh, Hobbs Heirloom. You can get this a lot of the places I got at Hobby Lobby. Unfortunately, they didn't have any king size left. So I got a queen and I got uh, a twin. And since I was going to be cutting it up in pieces anyway, I could do that. The one thing I was careful about, though, when I was cutting the batting was to make sure that I kept it all going the same direction. So I didn't, you know, I cut a piece that went here and I cut a piece that went there and the bottoms and so forth, but I didn't take a section that was going this way and turn it and put it across the bottom. And the reason I didn't do that is because batting just, or cotton batting, just like cotton fabrics and other things, shrinks. And this is one of the things I've been experimenting with is did I want to pre-shrink my batting? I don't know if anybody does this or not, but I did because I didn't want, I like a little bit of that crinkly look that you get with cotton, but I didn't want too much of it. And let me show you an example. Okay, these were some samples I did before I got um, and started uh, really putting my quilt together and it's kind of this around the time, same time I was putting the quilt together I was practicing with some of these. These are some leftover pieces of the flying geese that I didn't need and then I just made up some other, uh, I had just some scrap pieces here and there left over from when I was piecing the quilt and I made up a couple of swatches. This one, and I made notes, this one was uh, one that, this is the one that I quilted first. I didn't do anything to the batting. I just sandwiched it together and quilted it and then I washed it or I, I basically put it in hot water and and then in a dryer and let it shrink. And you can see it comes out real crinkledy and a very old-fashioned look to it which is nice for a cotton quilt um, but it it's going to have a lot of shrinkage and I measured before I quilted after I quilted and then after I pre-shrunk it. And I wrote all of my measurements down so I knew how much shrinkage. And there was a decent amount of shrinkage. And there was just a lot of shrinkage a certain direction. Um, just like sweaters and pants and everything, they tend to shrink up. And that's usually because of the way the fabric runs. There's a direction that the fabric shrinks up. It's either the warp or the weft. I can never remember which one it is. But there's, there's a direction that the fabric shrinks up. And so a t-shirt will always shrink more in the, the length than it will um, in the width. So unless the fabric is run crossways on your garment, it's going to shrink more in length. And that same thing happens with your batting. And so this one, the batting, again, I, I put it positioned it the same direction. This one didn't shrink quite as much after I quilted because I had done something to the batting before. What I had done was I misted it really good with just a spray mister with water and I put it in the dryer and let it dry. And so I didn't lose as much and I've got a little bit of a crinkly look but not quite as much as I did with uh, this piece. And that's what's led me to the way I ended up doing the batting. So yesterday when I was laying everything out, I cut all my batting into pieces and then I misted it really good and I put one or two pieces at a time in the dryer and shrank them up. And this particular, the whole length of this that I said was, um, because I was using that um, queen size batting, I had pieces that were 90 inches long. They weren't quite long enough. I'm gonna have to add a little more to them. But I had these 90 inch lengths they, they were about 92, I think, when I started. They shrank down to about 89. So I lost about 3 inches or 1 inch every 30 inches of batting. And so that's a fair amount of shrinkage that I went ahead and pulled out um, of them by going ahead and doing the misting and running it in the dryer. And it also made the batting 
nice and, and I, want, I don't want to say fluffy, but flat, because when you roll out batting, you have some wrinkles in it from just it being rolled up in the and stuffed in that bag, you get all that out when you missed it and you put it in the dryer. And I did not really feel like it stretched. I thought it, it held up really well. So the other thing I was doing these tests for was to see what kind of quilting I wanted to do. What I'd really like in the middle of these squares is to do some kind of a design. And you can see that, like this one, I didn't even finish it. I'm not really good enough at machine quilting to do the designs very well yet, I don't think. I'd like to do that, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to start working on the borders first. Uh, because I'm doing it in sections, I can do the borders first and then do the middle later. Um, and with the borders, I'm looking at doing this design where I have, where I come across, let's try it this way, I come across this way and then loop a couple of times and then go this way. And you can do it over here too. You can do your loops there. I think that's the way I did them on this one. I did across this way, a couple of loops, and then across that way. And I saw some of these designs on other quilts on Pinterest and things. And I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm not perfect. There's still some flaws. I need a little bit more practice. But I thought I would try that and see how precise I could be with that. And then in this floral area, this is definitely going to get just some kind of a meandering design. Nothing, nothing specific on the design in the floral area because I don't want to take away from the flowers. So probably some meandering, um, like um, stippling, but maybe with some loops or something in it. And and so that, I'll probably do that to kind of warm up and then go over to doing these flying geese. Now here's the piece I have ready to quilt. So I have my backing. My cotton, 80-20 cotton poly batting, and then here is that bottom section of the um, quilt where it has the floral, the flying geese border, and then another blue-green kind of border that goes around that edge. And I've just got it pinned together, and I'm going to start doing this quilting. But this is a very manageable quantity to keep at the machine. This is actually the smallest piece. If I have trouble quilting these and making them look pretty, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that 60 by 72 middle section on my machine. So this is a good test uh, piece for me to work on, what is supposed to be kind of the bottom of the quilt. So that's quite a bit about this quilt. Now let's go and take a look at another quilt that I finished. I did this for the Linus project and I'll tell you a little bit about that, that one as we go along. This is my second free motion quilt that I've done and I'm going to drop this off soon at a distribution center or collection center for Project Linus quilts, one of our local quilt shops, and they collect them. Project Linus is a charity that pairs quilts up with children in need and in hospital situations or some other type of situation where they could use some comfort like Linus with his blanket. So I did a couple of different patterns here that I got from um, Craftsy or some ideas from Craftsy's website. One of the quilts that I looked at there had these friendship stars and another quilt had the four patch with some different kind of sashing and I sort of married the two uh, designs. It was an Angela Walters design and um, so I kind of married the two and came up with this uh, pretty simple pattern for doing the quilt. The squares are uh, six inch blocks so they form 12 inch squares and then I think the uh, sashing is three and a half inches. So I did this over several weeks but it was a fun quilt to do and it let me practice a lot of quilting designs, some that I had done before and some that I had not. And I'll pull it back here in just a moment and let you see the back as well. The back is mostly the pink polka dot, but I used also some strips of other fabric as I'm trying to work through some of my stash. So thanks for joining me for quilting today. Um, the other thing that I've got going on right now is I'm working on some Christmas cards and I'm doing a little bit of videoing of this. I started this a couple of days ago in preparation for um, 
if we had a power outage because I can do, if I have enough light, I can do this kind of thing without any power. Don't need a sewing machine or, or an iron or anything. So um, I thought I might knock out a few of my Christmas cards. There'll be a video on that later on. Thanks for watching.